Traditional carbonara is made using cured pork, Parmesan cheese, Pecorino Romano, and eggs. Combined together to create a rich, flavorful, truly Italian pasta dish. Here's how I was taught to make an authentic carbonara. The first key ingredient is this stuff right here, and it's called guanciale, cured pork jowl, which is just the bottom portion of the pig cheek. We're not going to be using any olive oil in this dish, only pork fat. We're going to render it down, then literally drop the pasta right into it, which makes a noticeable difference in the flavor of the dish. To prepare the guanciale, I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the outer skin. I'll slice these into four pieces, then further chop into even smaller pieces. You can cut these smaller, larger, totally up to you, but this is usually the size that I go for. Now we want to prepare the cheeses. I'll grate about two ounces of Pecorino Romano, then about three ounces of Parmesan. Next, I'll crack three whole eggs into a bowl and proceed to whisk until they're nice and beaten. I'll add in the Parmesan, followed by the Pecorino Romano, then just mix it until combined. It's going to kind of look unpleasant and lumpy. That's totally okay. This beautiful mess is eventually all going to melt into our pasta. All right, so it's time to render down all that pork fat. We don't want our pan scalding hot here. We don't want to burn anything. So medium, medium low heat will suffice, and we're just going to start melting this. Also take this time to go ahead and add pasta to your boiling water. I'm using bucatini, by the way. You can actually see the guanciale starting to become a little bit more transparent the more it cooks. Continue to slowly render this down and you'll see the liquid fat developing in the pan. That's what we want. Here's a little trick an old Italian chef taught me. I'll move some of these pieces out of the way and I'm gonna take a spoonful or so of this fat and place it in a little ramekin. We'll add this to the top of our pasta later when we plate. And after another five minutes or so, the guanciale is ready. It's nice and crispy and ready to meet the pasta. Make sure the pasta is cooked to al dente, so it still has a little bit of a bite to it. We don't want it raw, obviously, but we also don't want it too soft. I'm not going to drain the pasta like I normally do. We're just going to transfer the pasta directly from the pot to the pan, right on top of the guanciale. I'll add as much as my 10 and a half inch pan can hold, and I'm just going to toss everything together so our pasta is coated with all that grease. At this point, make sure the heat is turned down to the lowest setting, and I'm just gonna add in our egg cheese mixture. I wanna use all this stuff up to the last drop. Then I'm going to add in some pasta water that I saved from the pot. I'll add some in and gradually add more as I go. I'm going to continuously stir everything together, making sure to not end up with scrambled eggs. The last thing I'll add is a little bit of black pepper. Toss that around and this carbonara is ready. And here we are, one bowl of authentic carbonara. Remember that fat we saved? I'll pour a little on top for added flavor. Top it with a little more Pecorino Romano, Parmesan cheese, and lastly, a touch of black pepper for some contrast. And this is ready to go. If you love real carbonara, you'll love this recipe. As always, ingredients in the description. Thank you so much for watching.